Hello, everyone, and welcome to the sixth and final session in American English Live Teacher Development Series 4. My name is Lauren, and I'll be with you today along with my colleague behind the scenes, Heather, who will be serving as moderator to help answer your questions and respond to your comments during the session. Today, our host, Kate, will be talking with our presenter, Wendy Colson, about communicative grammar games that help build grammar competence and speaking confidence in young learners. So let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome. As Lauren said, my name is Kate and I will be your host and facilitator today and I'm very happy to be here. Welcome to everybody who might be here for the first time viewing a webinar or to those of you who have been with us many times, welcome back and thank you for participating. So let's start with this great photo featuring participant teachers from the American Corner at the University of Lome in Togo. Many of these teachers are part of the Togolese English Teachers Association. We love to see teachers learning and sharing ideas, so please share your photos by emailing them to AmericanEnglishWebinars at elprograms.org or by sharing them on social media. If you share via social media, please be sure to tag us at American English for Educators so we can be sure to find your post and share it in the future. We hope to feature many of your photos in the next series. So throughout this series, we explored the topics of increasing learner motivation, content-based instruction, and communicative grammar teaching. Today is our final session in series four. We hope you enjoy learning and sharing with us. Which of these sessions was your favorite? Please make sure to write and let us know in the chat or comments. So here's a little bit about what to expect during today's session. Each session is about 60 minutes long and is often related to an American English e-teacher massive open online course or teacher's corner theme on the American English website. The presenter will present the material and I as your host will ask questions and make comments too. But we really hope to hear from you, our audience. Oh, okay. um, Bye. Bye. Uh, we really, excuse me, we really hope to hear from you, our audience, so that we can address your questions, concerns, and ideas. Please do share your thoughts using the comments feature or chat box. When our session comes to a close in about an hour, you will have the, the opportunity to receive a digital badge for your participation. At the end of the session, we'll share a link in the comments and at the top of this post. Click on that link and complete a short quiz about today's session. If you answer two out of three questions correctly, you will pass. Once you have successfully passed the quiz, you should be able to um, receive your digital badge within about a week from badger at badger.io. So we'll hope that you, we hope that you will join us for the next series of American English Live. We're very excited to announce that we're going to start another series on May 1st. The topics of this series will be teaching English with comics and graphic novels, using routines to enhance English language practice, and strategies and routines to help students build autonomy and critical thinking skills. So you can see a link there where you can register. Please share with your friends family and colleagues, um, and we hope that, to see you on May 1st. If you receive, if you register at the link provided, you will receive email updates, but registration is not required. And we're very excited to announce that we have another MOOC coming up on Teaching English for Young Learners. So this free American English e-teacher massive open online course is designed to introduce you to the theory and practice of teaching English to young learners aged three to 10 years old. You'll explore topics and approaches for teaching English that are not only effective, but also fun and engaging for children. Through weekly participation in this MOOC, you will gain new ideas for teaching, listening, reading, speaking, and writing in a meaningful context. So please, please sign up today and register for the latest eTeacher Massive Open Online course. We hope to see lots of you there learning and sharing with us. And now for today's session, Communicative Grammar with Games for the Young Learner. Games are a perfect authentic context for presenting grammar to young learners. 
During the presentation, we will examine three lively communicative grammar games that help build grammar competence and speaking confidence in children. And we'll explore developmentally appropriate ways to focus on grammar. Remember that these grammar games can be adapted for any age. And now it's my pleasure to introduce today's presenter, Wendy Colson. Wendy has been teaching English, developing curriculum, and training teachers for over 25 years, with the last 14 of those years focusing on young learners and low resource classrooms. She lives in central Mexico and has also worked in the United States, Hungary, Jordan, and Colombia, where she worked as a US Department of State English Language Fellow. Wendy has a master's in TESOL and applied linguistics from Indiana University and a master's of education in bilingual and special education from the University of Illinois in Chicago. Welcome, Wendy. We're so happy to have you here with us today. Wow, thank you so much for that introduction and thank you everybody from around the world for joining us. This is a topic that's very close to my heart, um, teaching young learners and games. So I hope you're like me and we're gonna have a lot of fun today. Welcome. So uh, Kate mentioned uh, what our objectives are. So to uh, go with our objectives, our agenda is we have three questions. What is authentic communication for young learners? What grammar should I teach or should you teach? And how do I teach grammar to young learners? And then we'll have our three communicative grammar games and hopefully we'll have time for lots of question and answers, but feel free to comment and ask questions during this workshop. So, I start with a question. So we're talking about young learners for this webinar between six and 10. So let's start by describing them. This is a question for you teachers. What are the characteristics of young learners? How do they learn? What do you think? Great, everyone. Let us know what you think. What are the characteristics of young learners and how would you say that they learn? Let's see, Hawaii from Oh, uh, says by imitation and memorization. Um, what else? What other characteristics of young learners would you take into consideration when teaching them in your class? Let's see. Luis says they like to play a lot. They yeah. listen and watch. Um, Noreen says curiosity is a characteristic. They learn by games from Norma. Let's see. Visualization. And they're very active from Lydia. Wow, um, I don't yeah. think I even need to teach today. <laughs> if you go to the next slide, basically everything you just said is there. So here's what I came up with. Like you said, they like to imitate. In fact, when I do games and songs and I have to scratch my nose, they sometimes scratch their nose as well. Um, they, they aim to please. They really want to please you. It's not about their peers just yet. It's about you. So use that. As you mentioned, they are energetic, spontaneous, and curious, and I hope you are too, <laughs> to deal with that. Um, they're egocentric, which at this age is not a negative term. That means they process everything from their point of view. So we start with things with the body before we move out into other things. They have limited attention spans. Sometimes this is seen as negative, but I think it just, uh, if we know that, we can change up our activities and dynamics. They love predictability. So routines and repetition are not boring for them. So we also use that to our advantage. Because they're so young, they have partial knowledge of the world, of course, and of their own mother tongue. And so, of course, of their second language, their first language and second language. So we have to keep that in mind. They learn through social, uh, social interaction. So they're very much a part of the group. Um, they like choral response. They like to feel safe and have uh, lots of interaction with the teacher. And this last point, we'll talk more in depth, but they see language globally as a whole. So if you go to the next slide, I'm going to talk about that point more in depth. But I want to know what you think first. I took this phrase from a book that I really love by Lynn Cameron called Teaching Languages to Young Learners. She said children are inside language. 
So looking at that last point that children see language as a whole and children are inside language, dear teachers here today, what do you think that phrase means? Great question. So we see this quote here, children are inside the language. What do you think that means? And do you agree or disagree? Or what are your thoughts on this quote? Right. Let's see. Um, let's see. Huaiwe says that young learners practice language with their bodies. Great point. Irene says they are born to learn. Great. What other ideas do you have? Let's see. Um, Atif says they like to play with the language. So great thought. Great. What other ideas do you have about children being inside the language? I guess I sort of think of it as they are interacting with it and they are a part of it and they're not thinking of it as something outside of them. They're just right there with it. Okay. You know me. <laughs> right. <laughs> So we tend to approach our classes and when we think of grammar from our perspective, we're teachers, we're grammar nerds, we love that. We're listening, speaking, reading and writing. And we have to know that, that's our craft. But if we're going to be learning centered, learning centered, not learner centered, we must take it from their perspective. They just wanna play the game. They're waiting, okay, teacher, just give me something that I can do. But because the language is such a universe, we need to scaffold or support the children for their active participation in the activities. So we're going to talk about that on the next slide. Thank you. So scaffolding, this is a key concept for this webinar. So, so they can participate, we need to provide just enough, that's the key words, just enough support so that students can complete a task or goal successfully. We know that when we teach our children to ride a bike, we have training wheels where we hold their hand, we, we uh, step further and further back. But what does this mean for the classroom? Just enough support. Well, here's some examples you can see. And on the next slide, I'll give you um, a little more in depth. Okay, so on the next slide, we talk about chunks. So we scaffold, we give them a phrase to say so they can participate. For example, in a game we're going to play later, we'll say, is it blue? So everybody will have that bit, their line to participate. We can so in this case, the in this case, the chunk is, is, the, it? is it? Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Just one substitute. little piece, one little piece of language, but maybe more one than one word. Little tiny piece, yes. Mm -hmm. We're cool. gonna talk about that much more in depth, but this is the way we can help their active oral participation in our activities and tasks. Choral response, so they can say, is it blue altogether? One, two, three class, is it blue? So we mm -hmm. don't leave any children behind or guessing. We want everyone to be successful and supported. We can use gestures, facial expressions, for example, is it blue? We could point to something blue. If we're talking about prepositions, we're gonna do a chant later. I can just show you the preposition without saying it so I can support your active participation. Um, routine, play the game in the same way, the same order, especially at the beginning. So the children know what to expect and they can focus on the language. That's another way. Also repetition. Sometimes teachers say, oh, Wendy, the kids get bored. I don't wanna do the same thing every day. You know how kids are with stories and movies. They want to do the same thing, they're excited. But we don't just do exactly the same thing. We change it up. We give a new word every day, a new child gets to participate. So these are just five examples of scaffolding and we'll want to do that, especially early on. Great. Yeah, we have a nice comment from Mahmoudal um, who says, scaffolding is important because it facilitates the cognitive process. Great comment, thank you. And a couple of other comments from participants related to the concept that you had for us about children being inside the language, which I thought were really interesting and I didn't quite see them early enough. Let's see, Mikhail says, they don't analyze the language logically, but they, uh, from the outside, like we do, they are inside. And Elena says they feel it and they don't care too much about grammar rules. So great comments. Thanks everybody. These are my people. 
Lovely. <laughs> Great. Okay. Let's go to the next slide because I have a question for you. So this gets at the crux of what is authentic communication. So look at this question. Look at that lovely picture. What activities did you enjoy as a child? Now, during those age, first language, second language, third language, what did you love? And then Great if question. you're a fast typer, what mm -hmm. types of language did this activity require? Great. And you mean language even in L1, right? Even in the first language? Oh, yes. Yes. Great. So it, uh, let me give you an example while mm -hmm. you're typing. Um, so this picture, I loved to jump rope when I was a kid. I don't know about you, Kate, but and this activity, the language it required was learning a chant. And we often the chants included numbers. Very so nice. Yeah, I like to jump rope too. And I also like to swing on the swings and sing songs with my friends. <laughs> great. Um, so let's see. Yeah, we have a lot of great responses coming in. Um, a wife said playing games. Eva says playing hide and seek. Let's see. Um, and don't re and uh, please remember that even the language, your first language is okay to talk about for this activity. So even right, it doesn't have us, to be in school. Yeah, it doesn't have to be about English. This could be about your first language because even as we're growing up, we're also developing those L1 skills as well. Yeah, let's, and let's emphasize the word joy too, really. What yes, what did you have fun? Rai says, Simon says, let's see, um, asking riddles from Ahmad, um, skipping and singing loudly from May Wish. Excellent responses, everybody. These are great. Great. So because this is a webinar, I had to go ahead and brainstorm, but you did, uh, you would have done my work for me. The mm -hmm. next slide is a word cloud. So I just brainstorm everything that I love and that I've brought to my young learners when I was teaching and to my teacher trainees. So I hope your activities are on there. What words or word stands out for you in this word cloud? What is authentic communication for young learners? Yeah, what, what do, you, do you see some, uh, ex, some words? Some of these you guys have already said as well, but what are the words that stand out that you think really um, are indicative of authentic communication for young learners? Um, let's see, I see playing and games, which I'm excited about. And I think we're probably going to learn more about that. Is that correct, Wendy? You got it. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So your activities in there. So based on what you said that you loved, this is authentic for young learners. I find a lot of teachers when I um, do my consulting think that playing is frivolous. It's just a warm up, but it's what we do in our first language. And I'm going to venture to say what we should do. I do it in the second language. So the next slide shows a perfect kind of graphic for what we're talking about here. So we have this phrase, children learn through play. So I want to see if you agree after all we talked about in this introduction, if you agree or disagree, you can just type A or D and then I'll explain the graphic. Do you think children learn through play, playing with language? Yeah, what do you think everybody? Let's see, do you agree or disagree that children learn through play? I'm seeing some yeses, agrees, mostly agree from Mikhail. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people agree with you on this one. Okay. All right. So thank you so much. I agree too. Mm -hmm. um, but I also agree if you in your curriculum, you have to do a little bit of grammar, that's okay. But this is our primary way of children learning through play. So you see a hand a heart and a head. So the hand represents children learning through movement and play. The heart, poetry, rhymes, and songs. This is basically for this web webinar and young learners where their learning is based through the hand, movement, and heart. Later on, about age nine or later, we'll get more intellectual activities using the head, meaning thinking about language. This, these metacognitive skills come much later. But that's not to say that our young learners can't think, but we don't wanna talk so much about language until later. So let's base ourselves in the hand and the heart. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. 
So we're ready to answer our first question. I love this picture of these kids. Yeah, what is authentic communication for young learners? Since I think we've already answered it through your wonderful experiences as a child um, and our characterization of young learners, we have a quote from Lynn Cameron again. Authentic communication for young learners is any activity and or content that is appropriate for the age and social cultural experience. You just told me that's what you did and what we should bring to kids in the classroom. So this is authentic. And if we look at this little gray box, I pulled this from Lynn Cameron's book as well. She says that there are studies that show that children from seven to eight years old, and I would venture to say younger, tend to pay more attention to the sound and music of the language. So didn't you mention songs and rhymes and chants? That's right where they're at. So this is authentic. I hope you agree. Yeah, I think a lot of people do <laughs> based right. on the comments. Wonderful. So we're moving right along to our second question. We have three questions and three games. So what grammar should I teach? Some teachers, you're handed a curriculum, or often the curriculum is your textbook, but uh, some of us don't have anything. So what do you teach right now? Um, or what should we teach? So I would substitute what grammar or vocabulary. What do, what do you think, teachers, or what are you doing? Yeah, so what do you think, everyone? What grammar should you teach, or what grammar or vocabulary are you teaching now? Let's see, Hussein says it depends on their level. Jackie says things that foster real communication. What topics for vocabulary and what topics for grammar might you need to focus on? Let's see, Noreen says daily life grammar. So maybe okay. that's routines or like simple present, that sort of thing. Um, Rai also says daily routines. Um, Let's see, um, Muhammad says he does grammar with pictures. Great. Um, yeah, some people are saying sort of everyday life or basic English, tenses, parts of speech. And a Perfect. few people have been saying it depends on students' needs like Yolanda. So excellent, great responses, everybody. Yeah, these are all great. And a few of them I heard, they are based on vocabulary. So. Here's my answer. Here's from my experience, and I'm glad we heard from your experience. Um, so we do start, which grammar? We start with this vocabulary, because vocabulary is tied to grammar through chunks. So let me explain that. Let's say we have our daily routines, as you talked about, or in this webinar, we're going to talk about colors. So we choose a set, whatever in our book. We find or create a meaningful task in which you can practice that vocabulary. So teachers, take these workshops and go learn a lot of activities because these are your resources for your curriculum. So I knew this game called the mystery bag and that's a meaningful task in which you can practice the colors. Now, how can they participate? With a chunk or a fixed phrase. So the chunk would be, is it blue, yellow, that phrase so you can participate. So you provide that as a teacher for them. Now this part uh, at the end, think about where you will start and where you want to go. So I will start with the chunk, is it, but I will add adjectives. Is it yellow? Is it a yellow pencil? Is it a small yellow pencil? Uh, if I go to animals, does it fly? Is it green? So you're going to start and you have to think about how you're going to expand and embed in vocabulary and grammar in your chunks. So that is how I do it. That's the, so basically the teachers, you said all of them are correct answers, but this gives you a way in which to organize and present to the students. Great, okay. and I can see when you choose to start with the vocabulary words, you're choosing to focus on meaning first and then allow um, provide some of the structure for them to play with the language as well. That sounds great. Right, and remember we talked about kids as e egocentric, so it's concrete. What can I see and touch? Those are vocabulary words. But when we add that chunk there, there's our grammar. We'll sounds have good. lots 
more examples with the game. Mm -hmm. All right, we're ready to answer the third question and get close to our games. Mm -hmm. All right, so how do you teach? I put that uh, with uh, quotation marks because that's tricky. I don't have one answer to this. Any, if anybody wants to comment while well, I'll tell you how I do it, how do you teach grammar? I'm gonna go ahead and answer because I know this can be done in several ways just for time's sake. So number one, as you'll see in the games today, I expose them to rich oral, that's key, oral language experiences. Everything you mentioned, songs, poems, games, stories, they need lots of data or else what are you going to, um, what grammar do you have? <laughs> you know, they need to have rich background of language. That's number one. Number two, now, this is a little bit of overlap. You need to automatize. What does that mean? You need chunks. You need vocabulary ready to use, okay? Ready for use. We make it automatic so they don't have to go through the whole song and the whole rhyme to get the language available. So we're focusing on these first two in this webinar for the young learners. However, notice Let's say we start with a chunk like, is it, is it yellow, for example? But then we move to animals or something and we need, does it? And the children you'll see know very well, is it? But when we introduce, does it? And we mix them, they get confused. So they have to notice what words come after is and what comes after does it, okay? We have action verbs. So you can either do this orally with the young learners but it's so much easier once they're reading and writing well in their first and second language. So if you can put off writing and more formal grammar to later, you will have a richer experience. Now the last one, focus on form. Don't get scared of that. A lot of people think that impedes or that prevents communication, but I don't think that that's the case. We have to focus on form. We give the children correct uh, ways to say things in our songs and poems. And we also want them to practice correctly. There's a phrase I love from a book that I'll have in the reference section, Madeline Hunter's um, Mastery Teaching. It says, practice makes permanent. Okay, so if we practice and practice the wrong thing, then <laughs> we're going to have a lot of errors, but this you want to focus on form. So when you create a new task that they have available with that automatic language, they'll be able to choose the right form. And that's part of scaffolding. You want them to feel confident. Wonderful. I have a really nice question from Mahmoodal who says, how do we make sure that young learners are noticing that part there, number three, how do we make sure that they're noticing that grammar? Well, you teacher will have to be very sensitive and observe what they'll notice is you'll notice is they're going to make errors. You have to be very attuned to the errors and that first language. Is the first language similar to the second language? What kind of errors are they making because of that? So once errors come up because you've introduced does it have instead of just is it they are they're not noticing in an obvious way to you but you're noticing that they're having a problem selecting and this is where you come in so you'll just take some time and produce a pattern with is it is it is it say what kind of words come next oh they're colored words and the other one are action verbs right done for the young learners you're done that's your grammar explanation <laughs> great mm -hmm. great question um, great and one question from ahmad who says i think they're referring to automatize part um does does the rote learning and memorization help them i think he means using the number two automatize Right. And that's another thing, like focus on form teachers like, no, you can't do drills and things. Yes, you can. I mean, we all learned our, our times tables that way. We, we can get the verbs, irregular verbs into muscle memory, maybe later on. Um, so that's our poems and our drills. Think of them as big chunks. We get that language inside them orally so that with repetition it's available for use wonderful so, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks. I could teach a class on this, but okay. <laughs> okay, I have a question for you then. Um, basically, this is kind of a review of everything we talked about. I'm going to change this first question a little bit. Have you noticed in this introduction before we play the games that I'm suggesting for young learners that we teach grammar indirectly or directly? By indirectly, I mean that we're not um, writing down rules and using grammar turns and necessarily focusing, focusing on that explicitly rather than the game or the task or directly, so the opposite. What, what do you think? What is my suggestion? I for indirectly and D for directly. Great. What do you think? So we've heard a lot about um, the ideas here for helping our students who are uh, younger learners with their grammar. What do you think? Is this more of an indirect or a direct approach? Let's see. Lydia, Miriam, and Lizzie also all are saying indirect. Um, so is Nguyen, at Stuko, Ahmad. Uh, lots of people, Mohammed, Met Lilith, many people are saying indirectly and they, so is that, are they kind of picking up what you're, what you're sharing here? Are they, are they Not on track? kind of, they're right on the money, <laughs> getting Great. However, like I said, I can teach a course on this. Sometimes we don't have a choice. We, it's in our books, it's in our curriculum, it's on our national exams, we have to. But when we have that direct one, I want you to start indirectly and have them discover it before you do this. So I'm gonna answer the second question unless somebody has um, answered it in the comments. My suggestion as a rule of thumb, again, many things depend on this. I would not start teaching that more direct grammar because we are ready, let's face it, through our chunks, we are teaching grammar directly, but not until the age of nine, 10, just put it off as much as you can. At least the whole semester of first grade, try to push that directness that you might have to do later. That's um, my suggestion for you. You will really benefit from this oral, rich oral language and the indirect teaching. Sounds good. Mathilde says, I think grammar is part of any learning process, but you don't have to mention it. <laughs> exactly, it's all grammar, right. Mm -hmm. And that's part of children see things as a whole. They're, they're not worried about it, we are. Okay, so last, as a review, before we move on to our first game, we're getting close, Kate. Okay, let's make sure we really understand the concept of chunks, okay. Chunks or performance pieces. Performance pieces is a word I got from the British Council website. I love that. So what is my line in this game? What do I need to say? It's a formula or fixed phrase. So again, this is from Cameron's book. Chump, chunks are groups of words that can be found together in language. So we have our vocabulary and we give them the chunk and there's our grammar. It's linked with grammar. They are the building blocks of language for young learners. So it's like in the beginning, <laughs> this mm -hmm. is how we start. Teacher support or scaffold, that's the word again, remember just enough support or help for the active participation. Look at the word active. We want them to participate and we need to give them something, that chunk. Here's an example. Is it yellow, blue, orange, black, blue, okay? And then the answer would be, Yes, it is. No, it isn't. They don't have to know what each one of those words mean. They just know, and it's intuitive for them because it's a whole, that that phrase means that. Believe me, the kids aren't worried about it. <laughs> All right. That's good. We're ready for our first game. Woohoo! Sounds exciting. Yes. <laughs> All right. My first game is called the mystery bag, and I have that bag right here. Okay, um, so let me tell you a little bit about why I chose this. I loved, 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 just like jump rope as a kid, a game, it's not really a game, but an activity in uh, elementary school called show and tell. Do you remember that, Kate? Yeah, that was fun. So you would bring in something from home and you would show it, okay, to the class and then you would tell them. Why is it special to you? Did you get it for your birthday? Who gave it to you? How does it work? Why you brought it in? 
However, that wasn't my first language. And I thought for, I, I think my second language learners would love this, but that's too much for them. We have to break it down. We have to give them a chunk. So if we put it in a bag, we can, they can guess, I can give them a chunk and we have a two-way conversation. Nice. So let me just one comment about the bag. I had a parent um, make the bag. It's very important to have a special bag. Now I have a very fancy one, mm -hmm. but any special bag will do. There was a great comment I got the other day for people who might not have a bag or access to materials that even a paper bag would do. And you could have the children color it, decorate it and make it their own. You can also use a pillowcase. So just do the best you can. Don't let anything prohibit you. So I'm going to play two versions of this game. I'm going to put, do a very basic beginning version and then a, a a standard version. Okay. I'll call Sounds it. Good. All right. Mm -hmm. You ready? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. So we're going to put, this is the, we're going to focus on colors. So I have pencils here and I will put them in the back. So let's review. What color is this? People let's answer at see. home, even though Kate, don't leave her alone. <laughs> uh, green. Yes, it is. I'm going to put it in the bag. Red. <laughs> All right, you know your colors. <laughs> Yellow. It is. Blue. And you could have your students shouting these answers too in a chorus, just like she was mentioning before, like a choral response. Let's see. Thank you um, for that. I do do that. And yeah, orange. Is that one orange? It's orange. So here's the basic instructions. I call a child up. They have to be quiet <laughs> to be able to do that. They come up, they put their hand in the back and they take a pencil without taking their hand out like I am. I look at it and we continue. So I say, class, you have to guess. Is it, remember that Chung? Is mm -hmm. it, remember the colors? Kate, why don't you go first as an example? Okay, let's see. Um, hopefully, all right, here's my guess. Is it yellow? No, it isn't. Somebody right. from the audience. What teacher? do you think, everyone? What is it? What is your guess? Is it's it something? Is it Mahmoud says blue? No, it isn't. So the child is answering this. It's not me, but I'm right there to support him or her. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Camilla says, is it red? No, it isn't. All right. Let's see, Maria says, is it green? Yes, it is, Maria. Now, Good it job, seems, Maria. <laughs> seems pretty simple for us, but this is so exciting for the young learner. I've used this in first grade. You'll wanna play, you can play two or three times in one class and you're scaffolding it because I only have five colors and they know what the colors are. They know what the chunks are. And every day we review colors and we add one or two new ones. So you see this builds and builds and builds. Now we're gonna play, I'm gonna take you into third grade now. You know your colors, you know numbers, you know body parts. Uh, you know many, many verbs, and we're going to talk about animals. So off screen, Kate, I put a new animal in. Uh oh, oh you're tricking me. One <laughs> in the bag, hopefully. So the kids will know there's a set of animals that you are um, studying. So number one, choose an object related to your unit. Animals. Um, put the object in the bag, or have a children uh, the children bring a, a animal from home stuff the animal, have one child or the child that brought the object come to the front with you. Remember your scaffolding, you're right there, you know what's happening. Have the children ask 10 yes or no questions with a chunk. So the class will raise their hand. Is it fuzzy? Yes, it is. No, it is it green? Does, can it fly? So we're going to talk about what does it eat? Where does it live? See, I'm scaffolding with gestures. What does it look like and how does it move? Allow the children to guess what it is. Don't let them say, is it a frog? After the first one, because <laughs> then the game's over or everybody is going to be uh, guessing like it's a free for all. So 
it, the point is to practice these chunks. So put it off after 10 questions. So let's play, but for this webinar, since um, it is short, let's just do five. And we'll start with Kate since she's played before, though she doesn't know what the animal is. Uh oh. All right. <laughs> okay. Here okay. It is. Let me see. Um, does it have fur? No, it doesn't. Okay. My... All right. Now let's see from our participants. What questions do you have about the mystery animal? Let's see. What questions do you have? You can use is it? or does it or can it? Let's see, what do you think? Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Marco says, does it have four legs? No, it doesn't. Oh, interesting. That's Let's see, too. Maria says, is it soft? Yes, it is. Oh, interesting one. Let's two see. More. Um, Dri says, can it swim? No, it can't. Oh and my I gosh, only on the one last more. <laughs> oh, only one more to go. Let's see, can it, I forget what I already said. Can it fly from Elena? Fly, not really, but you're getting close. Hmm, okay, interesting. One more, one more. One more, okay. Dree says, um, uh, actually let's go with Jordan. Is it domestic? I think that means does it live on a farm or a, in a home, I think, right? I will say it lives on a farm. Oh, okay. Can We're getting guess? You can guess now. We have five. Right. Is it a, what do you think? Chunk? Is it, it lives a, on a farm. It doesn't have four legs. It can't really fly. It is a bird. <gasps> Let's see. I think Irene might have gotten it. Is it a chicken? <gasps> Yes, it is. Yay. <laughs> they love it, especially when the kids can bring in an object too. So this is, you'll see, we'll build on this. Okay, if you could go on to the next slide. All right, so we take our vocabulary to grammar through meaningful tasks. Our, our unit is the chunk. Vocabulary was animals. Our meaningful task was a guessing game, a classic uh, information gap, the mystery bag. And our chunks, our grammar basically with our vocabulary, is it yellow? Does it have four legs? Is it a chicken? There you go. Now, it goes deeper than this, as you'll see on the next slide. Um, and let's talk about this difference. Activity, a lot of teachers do these fun games just as a, um, a starter, a warm up. But if you want to take it to a task for task or learning, our role as a teacher, we must be grammar sensitive. Okay. We, we see an activity like the mystery bag because we learned it on this webinar. So we get, we highlight a chunk from there, a performance piece. Through repetition, we bring it out and we work on that. You know, you said very little language, yet you could play a game in your second language. That's very exciting for children, but they're not even thinking about it. We're the ones that are more excited <laughs> too. And then you sequence the grammar. That's where planning is. That's where our art as a teacher is. So that last point, I believe I have it on the next slide. I do. Is this grammar? You can answer that or not, but Let's say that it is. <laughs> so we have, we start from that itty bitty chunk right there. Is it red? Is it yellow? We add objects in the classroom. We add adjectives. We extend it. We have a different kind of questions. Does it? Can it? We could even use could it? And we can embed imperatives. So it's not just a warm up activity. A lot of language and grammar is embedded in there. So it makes for a nice task. Wonderful. Think I think it's great. And we have so many people in the participant list saying how awesome they love these activities so much. So people are getting excited. Matilde well, says, and excellent. And great idea. I love it. Great, and you can use it every single day. Believe me, I've done it from first grade to third grade. And Kate, I forgot to mention this, but I have a funny story. Um, so I taught the same group from first grade to actually fifth grade, but in fourth grade, I stopped using the mystery bag. 
And after a week, the children were like, um, Miss Wendy and the mystery bag. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, you're too old for that now. That's a little kid. That's a young learner's thing. And they're like, mm, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> so I had to bring it back. But what I did is I used it just to focus on grammar because they were the age to do that. Or I used it to introduce a story. I put a key object from there. So this is how you can extend it for those of you who have older learners through um, upper elementary. And I've actually used it with adults. It's a good way. Yeah, to we had one participant, Ahmed, who said he's 33 and he loves this game. So I think we can do it for many ages. <laughs> okay, so let's go to our second game. Um, wait, I have one quick question okay. for you, sure. if that's okay. Yes. Um, I thought this was a good one from Sal Wawret. I'm so sorry okay. if I'm in mispronouncing. Um, with this, does the teacher introduce the language first? Or I, with that activity you just did, for example, with the animals, I think is the one that she's referring to. It's hard for them to create the questions on their own. So do you introduce the language first? Oh yeah, I'm so, they, at the beginning, they do not create the question. It's a teacher made chunk. I'm, it's already made, I give it to them. Imagine they come in in first grade. Mm -hmm. I use it like this. Is it red? We repeat it in chorus. I'm right there. Is it? I give them that scaffolding. So everybody's doing that. We start like that, but we build it up gradually. Remember, we're playing this every day. And if we do our planning, like you see on this screen, we can expand it. And they'll never even know they're saying all this language at the end because <laughs> it happened little by they're little. They're having too much fun. <laughs> right. I've done it. Great. <laughs> so, great, 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 great. Thank you. Thank you. So we're ready for our second game. All right. It's a fun one too. This I play very often, but I play the mystery bag every day. So it's called, where is the crayon? It can be any object, but we chose a crayon for today. So choose an object to hide. So perhaps we're working on colors or classroom objects. And then have the children, teachers will be the children today, and Kate tell you three places to hide the crayon in the classroom. Using the chunk, we can hide the crayon in the teacher's bag, under the desk, etc. Then have one child, these are the roles, leave the room, guard the door, and want to hide the crayon. Later on, they can say all that language themselves, but at the beginning, okay? So they don't peek and we hide it in one of the three places. And then after the crayon is hidden, the guard calls the child back into the room facing the class, sitting down on a chair. You can also put a chunk in there, come back, sit right here. We can build and build. Next, have the class ask the child in the chair, where's the crayon, okay? And the child answers with his or her chunk. Is it behind the books, under the desk, in the teacher's bag? All right, are you ready to play? Yep, sounds good. But first, and I love this, remember these uh, are activities in isolation. This is part of our unit. So I learned this from a wonderful mentor of mine, Dr. Christoph Jeffka. I've put his book in the reference section. We start with the grammar chant. Okay, with movements. Remember the children are in their hands. So can you do this with me? Yes, we let's do. do it. Mm -hmm. Next, Next to, to under. under. Everybody at home, do it. Let's start again. <laughs> I know people aren't doing it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next, Next to, to under. under. Next, Next to, to on. on. Next, Next to, to in front, front of. of. Next, Next to. to behind, next to right, next to left, next, next to, to up, up, next, next to, to down. down. And I've nice. also invented the next to in, they think that's funny in the mouth, next to around, depending on what prepositions. Mm -hmm. we so Fine. not only does this build up language first to play the game. Now remember, I only present this orally. We're not reading it, working on pronunciation and 
oral oral skills. So not only does it serve as a, a reminder, a brief review of the prepositions we can use, it also is a form of positive classroom management. When I, I don't have to say, be quiet kids, now we're gonna play this. No, we, I just start doing it. So they start doing it and saying it, they're all with me by the end and they know it's time to start. And if they wanna be the one that goes outside or hides it or the guard, they have to be quiet. Little tip for you there. All right, mm -hmm. so let's play the game. Here is a classroom. I chose a classroom with almost nothing in it on purpose because we can do this game anywhere. So, but remember, this class is gonna be filled with children, books, bags, the teacher. So there are many, many hiding places. So with the chunk, we can hide the crayon. Tell me three places where we can hide the crayon. Kate, would you start with an example? Oops, sure, um, let's see. We can hide the crayon. We can hide the crayon in the book bag. Okay, that's one. All can right. some of our audience give us two more? We can what do you think, everybody? Where are two other places we can hide the crayon? So in this case, the students are giving the teacher the ideas for where they are going to hide the crayon. Mm -hmm. Muhammad says under the table, and so does Ilham. We can hide it under the table. Good one. Wow. Um, how about we can hide it under the desk? Okay, so we have, we can hide it under the table, we can hide it under the teacher's desk, and what was the third one? Excuse me. Uh, we can hide it in the book bag. In the book bag, we have three. So I'm going to hide it, pretend you all went outside, we usually just choose one, but for this, oh, <laughs> I'm going to mentally hide it somewhere, uh -huh. and I'm going to ask you as the class to the person in front, where is the crayon? And your chunk is the second one. Is it, remember those three places, under the teacher's desk, under the table, or in the school bag? All right. Where is the crayon? Teachers, Kate. What do you think? Is it, let's see, is it in the book bag? No, it isn't. The class asks right. again to the student, where is the crayon in chorus? All right, is it under the teacher's desk? No, it isn't. You only get three chances. Where is the crayon? Well, by that time we know. <laughs> <laughs> is it yeah. under the desk? Yes, it is. Yay. Now I forgot to tell you one thing. You get, uh, yeah, good job. If you get two guesses, you get what? So if there's three places, you get two guesses. We play again. You add a new place each time we play. Sometimes you can play two or three times during the class, depending how fast. So if there's four places, they can ask three questions. I forgot to mention that. You did a great job. Great. So I played this a lot. I changed the, the object. So I think we're, all, we're good on time to do our last game. Ah, let me show you too. So remember our concept is grammar and vocabulary together is our chunk. We start with vocabulary. Look at all the things we can do with this game. Is it in the drawer? Is the crown on the bookshelf? Under the blue and white basket? In Isabella's pocket? Many different things. So this is where our planning and our craft comes in. All right, let's move on to the third game. It's called, What Am I Doing? So briefly, we will start with a grammar chant. Again, we select one child to sit in the chair and one child to act out a movement behind, okay? So for example, the kid could be acting out this behind the chair. Uh -huh. And the class asks again in unison, what is she doing? The child in the chair can't see who's behind her. Is she standing? Yes, she is. No, she isn't. The child in the chair, this is the one where they only have three guesses. Okay, she doesn't guess as she asks the class, what is she doing? And I'm going like this behind her because it's present continuous and she's like, she's eating and you turn around and see me eating. Let's play. <laughs> Sounds fun. 
<laughs> okay. Again, I have a grammar chant that I would like everybody at home, no cheating, to do with me. So this gets um, into the language, and obviously we have the present continuous here. Um, so it goes like this. Please do it with me. At least I can tell if Kate is doing it. Okay, is, right. everybody, is everybody ready? They better be. I'll find out somehow. Okay, right? here we go. I'm standing. standing. I'm, I'm sitting. sitting. I'm writing, I'm knitting, I'm reading, I'm counting, I'm swimming, I'm shouting, I'm eating, I'm drinking, I'm talking, I'm thinking, I'm giving. I'm taking, I'm, I'm sweeping, I'm baking, I'm laughing, I'm, I'm looking, looking, I'm, I'm washing, I'm cooking, cooking, I'm driving, I'm rowing, I'm kneeling, I can't do it now, I'm growing. Again, this is by my mentor, Christoph Jofka, in his book. Okay, we do that. Everybody's ready for the game. So I'm going to be the actor. Uh, Kate, uh, class, you'll be the class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Kate, you could be the volunteer for this sample dialogue. Ready? Yep. Class, mm. I'll, be, I'll help you, class. Okay. What is she doing, Kate? Is she sitting? No, she isn't. I can't hear you. What is she doing? Is she giving? No, she isn't. What is she doing? Is she counting? No, she isn't. Okay. Um, what is she doing? She is eating. Oh. And you turn around and me. So you can <laughs> add lots and lots on there. Can even do it in the past tense. Kate, do you think we have time to play it for real? Um, sure. Let's go real okay. quickly. We have about three minutes. Ooh, three minutes. Let's go fast. So what I'm going to, I'm going to act something out, teachers. We're going to have Kate close her eyes. So I'll, I won't keep doing it. Okay, I'll close my eyes. All right. She's my closing eyes are her closed. eyes and mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. Okay, got it? Okay, Kate. Okay. Um, is okay, she? You can open your eye. I'll oh, let you I open my eyes. Okay. <laughs> Even though it's present um, continuous, so I should keep doing it. So, okay. What is she doing? Meaning me. Um, is she swimming? No, she isn't. It has to be from the poem, and that was. Thank you. Um, what is she doing, Kate? Let's see. Is she cooking? No, she isn't. One more. What is she doing, Kate? Is she shouting? No, she isn't. Kids love knowing and you don't know. So can't <laughs> ask. You have your three. What is she doing? She is writing. Writing. Oh, didn't get and it. We pick another student. <laughs> so it's always exciting. I teach the chant two lines by two lines. We build it up. Remember, again, orally before we play, but you can play once they know four verbs, you can start playing. Now look at the next one. There's so many grammar opportunities in this from the chunk that I gave you um, to plural. We could have two people behind asking, are we sitting or the class asks, are they sitting or am I sitting, right? We can add possessives, WH questions and the past. Someone could do something and come back that we don't see. Was she sitting? Look at all this grammar. This is a real task here. This is, I don't know what I would do with uh, this for teaching the present continuous. I really don't. <laughs> so let's, uh, as a review, our last, one of our last slides is, now our roles as a grammar sensitive teacher, remember those errors, we have to be attuned to these, these tasks. So please attend many workshops from American English. We highlight, something, a, a chunks that the kids can use. We bring it out 
the daily act of partic oral participation, and we sequence it like I have it on my table. We expand that simple chunk to include much more language, kind of like TPR, we embed a lot of language, total physical response. So that is, I would like to know on my next slide, which ones will you use? The mystery yeah, what do you think everybody? Which one of these wonderful and exciting and wonderful great games are you going to use in your classroom? What do you tell what do you think? I'm looking for your responses. Lots of people are saying thanks for a lovely session. Thanks for an interesting. And now we see lots of people saying all three. All of That's them. That's what I wanted to hear. Good right. answer. You get a bad time. <laughs> I used all of them, they work and you can keep using them. So here are my references. While you're looking at, I would say thank you, thank you for taking one hour out of your life to be with me and then share what I'm passionate about. Thank you, Kate and your team. Have a great day or night. Wonderful, thank you so much, Wendy. What a great session. I can tell a lot of people really, really had fun today. Ahmed says, Games are a source of joy. Learning processes speed up when learners are in a pleasant mood. Very well said. Like and that e yes. And Ilham says, what an amazing class. I want to be your student. <laughs> I want you to be my student. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. And especially, Wendy, thank you so much for such a great presentation with all these ideas that we can use and take to our classrooms. Um, and for your participation, everyone, today, we are so happy that you were here to join us.